We live in a fantasy world now. Reality has been destroyed. This is the time that you really need to pay attention. The probabilities are overwhelmingly on gold's side. That is the best environment to see gold increase its value. Welcome to Palisades Gold Radio. I'm your host, Tom Bodrovix. Joining me today is Egon von Greyers, founder and managing partner from Von Greyers Gold Switzerland. Egon, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. I mean, you know, you you have to keep good and have to have to keep optimistic. I'm a, the world is a mess, uh, but fortunately, so far, I can detach myself from all the world's problems because I can't the things I can't do anything about. You know, I don't worry about, but still, I worry a lot about it from a, from an intellectual point of view and from the point of view of helping other people to pursue wealth. Um, you know, things are going in the direction that we've discussed for for quite a long time, Tom. Um, and it's going to escalate. So um, it'll be a very, very tough times for the world and for people. Um, um, so uh, we need to be there, there to at least to guide some of them um, the, 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 to the best of our ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really important point is to be able to detach from the situation that you know many of us, many of the people that speak about this and also the people that listen to us and are researching this constantly, it is important to detach and be able to still understand that there is good and, you know, sunshine to be enjoyed in the world, right? Absolutely. And, you know, you mustn't be an atlas and carry all the world's problems on your shoulders. You know, it's a very important to, you know, to have a, to have a life. Um, and we, we, I know there are a lot of people who worry about their wealth so much that they drive them crazy. That's not the right way. You know, you take the decisions that you need to take to preserve your wealth, put it, you know, uh, put the, your wealth in the right place um, and, and cover your risk as much as you can. Um, and then you enjoy life. I mean, that's my philosophy. I know things are going to get worse. I know the world is going to suffer more. But still, you know, you have, there has to be a balance in life. People have lived through in war zones and, and still survived and, and, and had a life. So it, it's it's difficult, but it's possible. Um, and that's, I think, that what we all have to think about. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Egon, it seems that there are so many different, really fundamental drivers in place for gold right now. And I just wanted to get your take on how you see the importance of all of these fundamental drivers. So how would you list, let's say, the top drivers for gold at the moment? Well, there's so many drivers depending on the era we are in. You know, they can, I mean, gold can go up in inflation, can go up in deflation, uh, uh, it can go up. I mean, over time, you know, this, this is a very, very easy investment and, and under, to understand and to analyze because over time, you can go back thousands of years that uh, no single currency has ever survived while gold has maintained its purchasing power for several thousand years. And, and that basically is the, the answer to your question. So that's number one, you know, that that uh, the, the, the money, whatever money is created by, by leaders of countries or, or central banks, um, that money in the end is always destroyed because every country in the world is living about its means once it gets over a th- threshold of you know that when 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 all of a sudden the the, the illusions of grandeur that they, they don't last anymore so so they well they might last but but the grandeur doesn't last last and countries are are then r- running out of money and, and starting to print money running deficits and then high debts and then the currency is debased uh and then in the end the currency uh, becomes worthless so you know, I've just wrote and my latest article, for example, that since 1700, there are 500 currencies in the world that have become extinct, most of them through hyperinflation. Um, uh, and, and, you know, that, that, that is the answer. So it, it's so easy, really, when you look at gold as, as a, you know, we don't look at it as an investment. We look at it as wealth preservation. I think it is an investment because in relation to certainly cash, it outperforms cash dramatically because every every cash that has existed, every money that has existed, has gone to zero. Um, so, so from that point of view, it's easy. And there are times when other assets outperform gold, uh, but oh, but right now I think gold is at the point when it's 
just not going to be just wealth preservation. It's going to be a major wealth enhancement also, because there will be you know, major moves away from other asset classes. So, so, so number one is that uh, what drives gold is is the destruction of paper money. Uh, so, so that's simple. And that, since you know that governments and central banks will continue to do that forever, since they've done it for thousands of years. You know, that's why it's so easy to hold gold. It's not always going to go up gold, of course. There'll be periods, gold has periods when, when for, for a long time when it goes sideways. You know, we take from from seventy from 71 when it was fixed until 71, of course, when we had the gold standard, uh, and it was at $35. Uh, you know, it, as we know, that it went to, in 1980, to 850 from 35. Mm-hmm. And, then it, and then because of that very quick move, it corrected for 20 years um, and came down as, as far as to 250. So it went from 35 to 850, back to 250. And that's when we went into gold at the beginning of the century. Um, and we averaged in on, at about 300 um, and haven't obviously sold anything, but added only since then. And that's what our clients do too. I mean, they're wealth preservation clients. They're buying it uh, without having to l- look at their price on a daily basis. They never do. That's not what you should do with gold. Gold is real wealth, uh, and and therefore you never have to worry about the value. Um, so so that's the, so that's the, the, your your first backer of gold, your governments and your central banks, uh, because you know they'll destroy your money. And mm-hmm. um, uh, number two, there are of course uh, uh, that we are seeing right now. I'm going to sadly see more of, which is war. Um, war, major wars, will drive gold up because uncertainty in the world. Um, it is obviously a time when people acquire gold uh, 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 so as a matter of safety. Um, uh, and, and so if you combine that now with uh, the, the, uh, the third factor, which is, of course, is the deficits um, and the increase in debt. You know, you just take, I mean, you take the the um, U.S. federal debt uh, when Reagan became president was just getting up to one trillion, uh, and and now you're talking about thirty four trillion, uh, and and you know just just uh, um, at at the beginning of this century it was well, five trillion, uh, so it, we've gone from five trillion to thirty four trillion just in this century. You know, these figures is just unbelievable. Um, uh, and, you know, it means, of course, that the world is bankrupt and the U.S. is more bankrupt than any other country. Um, um, and, uh, of course, no one is ever going to repay the money. And, and, uh, and you know, I have, of course, written about a word about a lot, the, the derivatives outstanding, you know, officially the, the, the BIS who keeps the statistics, Bank of International Settlement in Basel, you know, they, they state it to be just under 700 trillion. I think that's nonsense. I think, you know, it was double that 10 years ago. They just halved the figure. I think they took out the other side, which is, is of course, wrong because you can't, you know, the, when when counter, if a counterparty fails, gross risk remains risk. So, uh, the, the whole risk because nobody pays on the other side. So it should be the gross amount. So it's, it's over a quadrillion. Um, and, and, you know, if you include shadow banking, et cetera, I, could, I think... And and that is not recorded. Nobody knows what it is because there are so many bets on bets on bets through hedge funds and and, and finance companies outside uh, outside the, the financial system. So it could easily be several quadrillion, and that's never going. That's going to fail. Um, uh, and and that initially, central banks will help and and, oh, and governments and create debt out of that. But you know that 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 will in the end, that debt will obviously um, mean that uh, banks will fail central banks will fail, and countries will fail. Um, and that's what I see in the next few years. So so the debts and deficits, that there is no solution to that. And even, of course, you know, we, we talk about the Western world, especially the US, as, as being a leader, the debt king, if you want. Uh, but you, know, you look at China's uh, debt picture also, that looks pretty grim too. Uh, so and, and China is, is not going to solve that easily. The only advantage China has is that it's mainly a domestic debt. So they're not borrowing from the rest of the world, like the US is 
by all these dollars that have been created, petrodollars, et cetera, around the world. So therefore, China will de deal with it internally, but China is going to suffer dramatically. You know, you have, as you know, the, 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 the massive pro property speculation, for example, with, with, with empty properties in China. The interesting thing is now that you're getting all over the Western world also empty properties. Office properties in, in most countries and, and in many states in the US are now standing vacant up to the, you know, up to 50% in, in, in many places. Uh, and uh, the these the property or, or, or real estate loans uh, in banks is turning so sour now that that in itself, I think, within the next year will make banks go bankrupt. Um, so, so the, you know, just that area uh, is a massive problem. And that, you know, then you have all the personal debt and corporate debt, et cetera, you know, private equity, for example. I mean, that's the biggest bubble ever in my view. Um, and, and it only works uh, as, as long as the music is playing. When the music stops, you know, those values uh, that private equity companies pretend that, that the, their companies are worth, they're not real. Uh, and when they can't, when the stock market starts going down, there's no chance of selling these investments and the, the, the financing of this private uh, equity or these private equity deals uh, will be worthless. Um, so there are so many areas now within the financial world and the banking world um, that are going, you know, they, everything, everything comes comes out uh, when there are problems. I mean, I remember in the you know, periods like in the 70s, you know, you go from early 70s, good times, everybody's spending all of a sudden, uh, times turn bad, stock market crashes like in 73, four by, by two thirds. Um, and of course, then a lot of things have been swept under the carpet, uh, all the bad things, and they come out. Um, and this is when you get, like we heard in the early 70s, you had banking collapses, you had savings, savings and loans in the US, et cetera. Um, and so we're going to see that again, uh, Tom. Um, and and, and you know, there is, in my view, there's no chance for this banking system to survive. There, of course, there, there's, there is, of course, they will restructure. Of course, they will come up with CBDCs, central uh, bank digital currencies. But they're just another form of paper money, fiat money. It's not going to sell, solve anything. It's just going to be an illusion for a while that, you know, we sweep the old debt under the carpet. Now we have new money, but the old debt is still there. And the and the assets that the old debt were backing, uh, if, if that's just made to disappear, it means that also the, the, the debt disappears, the assets will also implode. And that's what we're going to see in, in, in coming years. Um, it'll be a very difficult period for the world. But there is no other way. There's no way to solve this, Tom. Uh, by printing more money, or and then there's obviously no one, no government in the world is going to just slash expenses by fifty percent, uh, because uh, that's politically uh, impossible and a political suicide. So they'll continue to print money uh, until it becomes properly worthless. As I said, the U.S. dollar is down ninety eight percent since nineteen seventy one, when when the gold window was closed. It's only two percent to go, but of course th that two percent is hundred percent from now. And that's going to happen in the next few years. So anyone talking about dollar being strong, well, you know, it's been a little bit stronger relatively um, for, for the last few years. But but that's totally meaningless. You know, the, you know the, 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 there's no price for for you know being being second to the bottom. They're all going to go to the bottom. So whether you, whether US dollar comes a little bit behind one or two other currencies, um, I don't think the dollar will. I think the dollar will start a real move down. Uh, relatively soon, uh, so, so so you know the, the uh, and so we will see worthless currencies, and we will see a, a, a reset, which is which is not uh, a, a reset that has been constructed by someone. So it's just an accidental reset, if you want, uh, and that's the only way that the world can come back to par to parity again, uh, because the the. Yeah, we cannot grow. The world cannot grow from a, a debt level of, of 100 trillion in the U.S. total debt. And as I've been showing that I mean, U.S. federal debt, which is now 34 trillion, it doubles since Reagan, for example, is doubled every eight years on average. Um, 
So, so Reagan, it was, as I said, just under a, a trillion, uh, now it's 34. So it's double every eight year on average. That takes us to, for the federal debt, takes us to 100 trillion by, 90, by 2036. Um, and I think that's conservative because I think it's going to get worse. I think deficits are going to get bigger. Um, and of course, if interest rates go up, as I expect also, interest rates are now um, artificially low. And I think the the I don't think the Fed is got, not going to have any chance of keeping interest rates low. Uh, in my, the, the market, especially the long end of the market, will pull them up. Um, and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see 10% interest rate or more, like we saw in the 70s. And of course, if you take 10% on 100 trillion debt, you know, take 10, 10 trillion <laughs> Interest, um, you know, that's uh, that's what two and a half times the U.S. budget in today. Um, so, so you, you are, you, it, it's so this can only be resolved, as I said, by an implosion of the current system, uh, which will lead to massive suffering. Um, but that's the only way we can. We have to start without a debt. That's the only way that the world can continue to grow long term. Of course. It means starting from a much lower level, but hopefully a much sounder level also. Um, and then, you know, take another 100 years or more uh, for the next bubble to, uh, to appear again. And that's, that's the history of the, of the world's uh, financial system and the world economy. It's, so these, these are just cycles. It's just that we, I think we are at the end of a major cycle now. That could be a 200-year cycle or a 2,000-year cycle. We'll only know afterwards. So therefore, the, um, the, the correction now will be bigger than it has been for a long time. Because also, you're looking at this time, the whole world. that We've never seen that before. We've never seen such a bubble in every part of the world, in the West, in the East, in China, in emerging countries, et cetera, Japan. Um, and that's why the fall will be much greater now than we've ever seen before, uh, because always before it's always been a region or a country that you know could be saved by the rest of the world or ignored, but now it's actually the whole world. So that that's you know intellectually, it would be fascinating for observers like you and I and many others who are actually looking at this on a daily basis. Humanly, it'll be horrible, and, and you know, the, if you then then link uh, uh, wars to this, which I think is inevitable, you know, the the U.S. doesn't want peace. The neocons in the U.S. want war. They want war, but you know, they know the consequences of nuclear war. So they, they you know, that that's the dilemma they have because a nuclear war is the end of the world for most people. You know, it might be. Some people in Tasmania or or, or, or in Patagonia or whatever <laughs> survive, um, but but overall, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of people will die. So nuclear war is not a solution. They know that, but you know, the 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 there are a lot of trigger happy people in the world, especially uh, U.S. neocons, and of course, sadly, you have a president who is not in charge. Um, and and he's being guided by by other people who are unaccountable, um, and that makes the situation uh, for the world much less secure than it should be. Um, so 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 <laughs> that was the long answer to your question about gold. All these factors uh, will drive gold, and then of course you have the BRICS countries, which are you know, continuing. To, uh, you know, the obviously commodity-led countries, um, and they will continue to invest in gold like we're seeing now. Um, uh, uh, and then also, uh, as I have been writing about, I think that central banks, especially since the U.S. decided to to freeze or confiscate their the, the Russian assets, uh, central banks will no longer hold their reserve assets in dollars. Uh, that's absolutely certain. They can't shift overnight. That's good. But the, we're seeing a gradual shift already, especially with, with, in the, in the, with the BRICS countries. Uh, so it means that um, dollar will not be reserve asset anymore, and it will take some time. Uh, and, and the only obvious alternative to a dollar is gold, of course. So, uh, so therefore, Central banks are going to hold gold as a, as a reserve asset. So there'll be major shift into gold from central banks, from the BRICS countries, and because of all the problems that I've outlined, also in in um, you know more normal investors, funds, etc., will go into gold. I'm not a gold bug. We went into gold 25 years ago because 
we saw the problems in the world coming, we saw the end of a major cycle, and we decided that uh, the best way to protect your wealth uh, is by holding physical gold, obviously, outside the banking system. So, you know, we're not gold bags at all, and I don't care about what, what happens to gold in tomorrow or in two years' time or whatever, because I just I know that this is the best way uh, for for myself or for family, for our, our investors to protect their, their assets. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, has been throughout history and will continue to be. Mm -hmm. Egon, I want to kind of illustrate exactly what you were just talking about. You know, these central banks purchasing gold instead of U.S. treasuries. And you guys had a chart here that you yeah. recently put out. So yes. talk us through a little bit about this. And is this really, you know, in some ways, a one-way valve, a one-way equation that doesn't resolve back the other way? Yes. Yeah, so what the, this is the obvious consequence um, of uh, this debt-driven world um, and led by the U.S., which is, of course, bankrupt. You know, sure, they say they can never go bankrupt. But when you print unlimited amounts of money and when you increase uh, your debt exponentially, you know, you are basically just printing worthless pe pieces of paper. Uh, the, the U.S. has been... So far, skillful enough, but but with what, what, what uh, from the time the uh, gold window was closed, of course. But then with, with, uh, with Nixon and, and um, Kissinger, uh, then they introduced this petrodollar that that the whole they told Saudi Arabia that you know we will support you with money and 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 with investments and and we'll send you weapons, etc. Um, if the whole world buys. Uh, oil from you in US dollars. So that was very clever, very clever scheme. So we've had a lot of dollars floating around in the world because of that. Um, but that is now reaching saturation and is all now. We have, of course, the the, the, the de-dollarization, which everybody is talking about, um, and, and it's happening. It's just, it just not can't happen overnight because it's a long process. When we the world has been dependent on one currency, sadly a rubbish currency that is way overvalued because of all the printing. Uh, but it's it's um, kept its value because there have been so many who have been using it and trading in it. Um, so that, you know, but now you see here that you're showing here. So no, the U.S. has basically had a wonderful means of financing uh, the, the, their extravagant uh, lifestyle uh, by issuing unlimited uh, treasury bonds, um, and um, that their that world, you know, the, the, the China has bought them. China used it as a way of exporting to the U.S., giving them credit. Um, Japan has held treasury bonds for a long time. Other countries have also held them, so you know many, uh, even Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, etc. But that's come to an end now. Every everybody is now as selling their treasury bonds. Nobody wants them. Russia sold them. China is selling down as fast as they can. Um, uh, Japan is reducing slowly, um, and that's what you're seeing here in the red line. Everybody's selling treasury bonds. So that means that the U.S. cannot finance itself anymore. Um, and the, the, so what we are going to see in the next few years is that the only buyer of U.S. Treasury bonds will be, or the U.S. Treasuries, will be uh, the Fed or the U.S. Uh, the Fed, uh, the central bank of uh, the United States will be the only buyer of the debt that the U.S. government issues. So first, the country issues debt because they haven't got any money, they borrow, and then since nobody wants to buy that debt or invest in it, and that's what's going to happen in the, or happening now, and it's going to happen at, uh, at an accelerated level, uh, then they also have, they also, they only, they only have one buyer for the debt, uh, and that's the Fed. And that's what you're showing here with the red line, uh, and all we were showing in the graph we pub published. So, th so that that's, yeah, you go ahead. I was going to say, for those that are just listening, we're looking at a graph of the growth of central bank gold purchases that just from 2013 to 2023 just keeps going up to the right, you know, relatively gradually from, you know, let's call it $50 billion to just under $400 billion. Yet we see the holdings in U.S. treasuries grow a little bit and then drop and then drop off dramatically starting in 2021. So, you know, 
this just really illustrates the sea change in the way that the U.S. government can really finance its debts. And, you know, this continued war effort, pension plans, all of these different things, it just shows this complete change in the world's holdings. And this is, you know, seemingly, or a good portion of it seems to be going into gold, right? Yes. Um, now, now, you know, the, 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 the problem that um, these central banks are clever buyers of gold. They never go into the market and buy lots of gold. Mm-hmm. They always go straight to another central bank so, or, 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 or do, do deals not, you know, on the market. So that, that's being shown. Um, and therefore, because they never want to push the price up. We haven't got to the stage yet when there is demand for gold to the extent that the price really goes up. Um, because at the, as, at the same time as the clever buyers, like the central banks, buying gold, investors are selling gold. And if you look at, um, and, and I don't think we have, I've shown it before, but if you look at funds and ETFs holding gold, um, I mean, that's gone down by something like 30% since 2020. Uh, whilst the gold price initially dipped a bit, but it's gone up dramatically. So, so um, you know, the, the, the purchases uh, of, 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 of these funds of gold um, have, have well, dem- decreased dramatically in spite of the gold price going up. Uh, so that means that there is no interest uh, in gold right now. Uh, central banks are clever. They know what they're doing. They're buying funds are so excited by the stock market um, and about other assets. So they're so they're not buying gold. Uh, they are going to change their mind very soon because gold is now been, been lying around in, in, in dollars, uh, you know, just around the 2000 level, a bit above. Um, and uh, the it's always possible that if we get, I expect uh, a major stock market sell-off coming at some point, probably may probably not in, in, in too far away. Uh, it's possible that gold initially goes down a little bit, but this time it's not going to continue down because there's no alternative for people. There's no alternative to to, to selling um, uh, once they sell their stocks. What are they going to buy? They're not going to buy treasuries uh, uh, because treasuries, as they know, that's, that's just uh, rubbish. Uh, so uh, a lot of them, not everybody, is going to buy gold, um, uh, and and so we haven't seen that buying yet. Um, and when the gold goes over 2,100, um, it's going to move very fast in my view. I'm not worried about the price. So I'm talking about price. I'm not really interested in the price. I don't like giving targets in gold because I've said many times, you know, gold will go to levels that uh, uh, you know are unfathomable today. Um, and we, you know, we have no idea. But it doesn't matter. Some people give the price for gold in X years time or whatever. Uh, I did maybe 10, 15 years ago. I stopped doing that a long time ago because why should I give why you can't give a price in gold? Tell me what you're you're measuring it in something that's going down to zero. So it's it's totally useless to measure it um in in, in a currency that is worthless. Uh, the only the only uh, the only reason for doing that is that if you did continue to hold the currency, you know how much money you're losing, <laughs> but uh it, by not holding gold. Um so so uh, but you know the, the so gold is just pure and simple wealth preservation. But as I said, it will be wealth enhancement in, in, in coming years. And this, of course, there is no more gold around. You know, there is about three thousand plus tons um, of, uh, of gold produced every year from from the mines, and then there's another thousand tons or so um, of of, um, of um, gold being refined from from jewelry, etc. Uh, and scrap gold, and uh, but they, they, there won't be more gold. There's no there's no chance of producing more than that, which means that the increased demand that we will see in gold, which will be major, can only be satisfied by a much higher price. So people want to invest a uh, million dollars in gold, um, and and then they will get you know in, in in a year's time or two years time they'll get half of what they would get today for a million dollars. That's the mm-hmm. way it will work. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and uh, and then, you know and that's what we're going to see. I'm absolutely convinced. So Egon, 
What does this mean for the U.S., which you know holds, according to the official numbers, the most amount of gold out of any country? Are they going to try to revalue or monetize somehow the 8,000 plus tons of gold to help with this fiscal situation in some way? You know, number one, they got to show their cards. Uh, and uh, because we people in the gold industry, nobody knows, of course, but we have a gut feel that they haven't got 8,000 tons mm-hmm. um, uh, because there hasn't been a proper physical audit of gold in the U.S. since Eisenhower's days. There's been part audits, and, and, uh, and you know, they're, they're, uh, but there hasn't been a full audit taking into account also all the derivatives and, and, and futures that uh, goes against this gold. Because remember, when a central bank, so what is ha- has been happening in the last few years, uh, and you see that flow, is that um, central banks are lending gold to the bullion banks. Bullion banks are the, uh, you know, the major banks that are dealing in gold. Uh, so central banks lend gold to the bullion bank. Before, the bullion bank would keep it in their vaults, mainly in London or, or in New York. But you know, in, in, in recent years, last 20 years or so, you look at China's demand of gold going up very strongly. So, so in, in the last 20 years or so, that gold now from the bullion banks that they have borrowed from the um, central bank, and they give the central bank an IOU, uh, and then the the gold bars, which are big four hundred ounce bars, mainly from central banks, they go to Switzerland to be refined, and they're broken down into uh, one kilo bars, and Switzerland then exports them to China, to uh, India, etc. Big buyers of gold. Um, so now that gold is gone from the West forever, they're not going to send it back. So all the bullion banks now have, they have um, uh, an IOU. To the central bank, and if the central bank says, "Can you please give me my gold back?" There's no chance for these bullion banks to give them the gold back because they don't have the gold. It's been sent to said another country that are never going to send it back, um, and therefore there will be major shortages of gold. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, you know it's not a balanced market. And then you have on top of that, of course, the futures markets, etc., which is mainly a paper market, not a cash market. So um, there will be major shortages of gold as these paper markets blow up. And those paper markets are not just futures markets, as I said. They're also central banks and bullion banks uh, that deal in the uh, future or or in these paper markets of gold. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be fascinating. So coming back to your question, I doubt, um, and many others too, that the U.S. actually has 8,000 tons. What they have, nobody knows. Um, do they have 4,000 tons or whatever? So if they're going to revalue the gold, you know, the world's not going to believe it, um, in my view. Certainly not the, the, the brick side of the world, uh, and these, um, you know, the east and the southern countries that actually buy physical and hold it. Um, so therefore, um, I, don't, I think that uh, whatever the U.S. is trying with its gold, no one's going to believe it, and it will have very little significance for, to, to you know, make any change to their economy or to their deficits. Um, or, or to the um, collapse of the dollar, uh, yeah, in th- my view. I think that's an important point, is that there's a difference between, let's say, a physical audit that obviously raises a lot of questions because of the lack of it, but there's also a, let's say, a counterparty audit or a loan audit that should also be done. Just to clarify that picture, because of the amount of Gold that has been possibly loaned out over the years. Yeah. So so central banks count gold lent to bullion banks as their phys- as their own physical gold. They count that, and uh, you know that's part of their assets. That they call that gold. They don't say that we have a major risk here. We only have a piece of paper from a bullion bank, which, in my view, <laughs> will go under because <laughs> uh, they can't meet their commitments. Um, uh, and uh, but central bank count that counts all of that, all of those you know, IOUs from bullion bank as physical gold. Uh, and when they show that hand one day, which they will never do, so they're, 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 but the world will see that they won't be able to deliver, of course, mm-hmm. um, in the end. So so I I don't think that is um, that eight thousand. 
theoretical tons is not going to uh, help the U.S. in any way, in my view. Mm-hmm. You got another piece of what I wanted to touch on, or let's say circle back to, of what you touched on this morning was that when the stock market gets sold off, or you know, the example you gave was these private equities. When those start to get sold off, in let's say it happens in a dramatic fashion. Does that wealth end up getting destroyed? And how does the value of those assets end up translating into better value for gold? If that wealth ends up getting destroyed, I don't understand how that value gets put into gold because you know you articulated well that there aren't going to be many other options at that point. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, those values will be destroyed because. Uh, you know, if you take private equity, for example, you know, if there's no buyer for those companies, the, uh, which means that they will not get any financing either, these highly leveraged companies, so they will fail these companies. Mm-hmm. So so the people who are invested in private equity will not have the money to put into gold. That's what you're saying. But remember one thing, Tom, that there is only half a percent of world financial assets in gold today. Mm-hmm. And that's that's your answer, you know. So e- even if a lot of assets, it's half a percent of a bubble. So that bubble will come down dramatically, mm-hmm. um, you know, because world financial assets will re- decline by 50, 75, 80 percent, whatever. But you know, you don't need a lot more buying in gold for gold to go up because there's so little gold around. Mm-hmm. So that therefore, no, there's not going to be, you know, a um, uh, 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 Hundreds of or you know, several hundred trillion of assets that financial asset that that we have today in, in stocks, bonds, property, etc. That's going to go into gold, of course not. Uh, but you know it's going to be a fraction of that. But since gold is such a small market, that's going to drive the price up anyway. Um, uh, and and of course then at some point gold will be, as I said, uh, at a totally different price. Mm-hmm. You got. One piece we haven't really touched on yet is the idea of inflation. So let's just focus on the war spending that the U.S. is very likely going to be putting out on the horizon here. Does that equal deficit growth and therefore an increase in inflation again as well? Yes, it's quite amazing how countries all around the the West, you know, the U.S., the Western Europe or, 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 or Europe, uh, they're all just signing checks for Ukraine of, of, of hundreds of billions uh, of dollars, euros, or whatever, without obviously asking the the people or the, um, if they actually if, if they want to spend that much of their own money. That, that in the end should lead to will lead to much higher taxes uh, and more misery for the people. Mm-hmm. No one is asked that. Uh, no one is asked, do we, do we want to send hundreds of billions uh, to Ukraine to kill, you know, half a million uh, or, um, or, or a million people or whatever? Uh, is that what you want, my people? Nobody's going to say yes to that. Nobody's going to say yes to sending their, their sons or their daughters to a war where, where they are likely to be killed or a high percentage likely to be killed. So, but this is again where leaders sitting in cozy offices or underground or whatever just take these decisions without actually understanding the consequence for uh, the consequences for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so th- this is you know debt financing at its worst um, and and clearly uh, very inflationary because you, again you're printing money. Uh, that you haven't got and will never repay, and they'll be inflationary. And as I said, in the end, there won't be any, there won't be enough money around. Interest rates will go up, and 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 the countries will default at some point, although they will never admit it because they just print more. But then you get into the hyperinflationary scenario, which is very possible too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a difficult situation to try to really understand because. On one hand, you see the Fed wanting to keep rates higher for longer to fight inflation, especially if we get another wave of it. We could absolutely expect the Fed to at least hold rates where they are, if not you know, keep ratcheting them up, if we only focus on the inflation side of the equation. However, 
if we look at the debt rollover side of the equation and understand mm-hmm. that they don't very likely don't want to take on and refinance this debt at a higher level, how do you see the Fed kind of playing out or being able to to work both sides of this equation? Do you see lower rates coming in to save the day when they have to refinance this debt that is coming due this year? It's a fascinating situation. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, like you know, two people pull, pulling the, the the cow from both ends. You know, and and because whatever you do, uh, and then somebody sitting at the bottom like the the lawyers milking it. <laughs> but but uh, the the um, whatever you do, you'll fail. Uh, of course, on the one hand. The U.S. government and the Fed cannot afford high interest rates. They must have them low because with the debt you're talking about and growing exponentially, um, you know, they need low rates. But, you know, I've been of the firm opinion since, since uh, well, the early 20s here, 20, 20, 21, um, that the, the interest cycle has turned. Uh, that lasted since you know it came down since 1980, basically 1881, um, and uh, the interest rates are now up. Um, and they obviously, if you look at supply and demand, they should be going up. And you look at the inflation, they should be going up. And my view is and has always been that the Fed will lose control of interest rates. Because they would like, everybody talked about pivot, they're going to uh, lower rates, but they can't afford to lower rate because also you you know then that you will have the dollar collapse. You will have that anyway, uh, but it will precipitate it. Um, So so the the, the market, in my view, uh, whatever the Fed wants, will drive the rates up, starting with the long end. And, you know, the, the financing demand that the U.S. government has in coming years, as, as you mentioned, and, and uh, the, you know, the deficits will escalate dramatically, in my view, will mean that you know, the rates have to be very high um, to get anyone to buy, to buy this debt. I mean, I think anyone who buys this anyway, uh, treasuries, are crazy. It's a guaranteed that, the a, number one, that the currency will be worthless, and in my view, it's also guaranteed that the government will never repay it. So they will have, they will try all kinds of games now, also the, the, the governments, because they won't have enough uh, investments, except for the Fed buying very inflationary. They will now play games like they will force people to put the retirement savings, uh, to put half of the bank account, cash, et cetera, into US treasuries, May, uh, probably at a very low rate. Or, or with, uh, and then maybe with a balloon in in thirty years' time, I uh, you know two percent now and ten percent in thirty years or whatever uh, of worthless money uh, from a, from a bankrupt government. I that that's I think what will happen. So people now who have assets in the bank, they they run the risk of as I said having that money not confiscated because the government will never say confiscated, mm-hmm. but they will force them to put into things. That means that the money is blocked for a long time. And obviously, that's bad for the economy also because nobody can spend that money, et cetera. Uh, but I think that's a high risk of that happening. In, in, uh, so they will try to do that in con- combination with the printing. But that obviously also uh, will mean that you know the whole banking appear. Nobody will want to. People will try to do anything they can to get their money out of the bank. Um, and and if 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 governments freeze their money in the bank, I mean that in itself will create a revolution. So either way is going to lead to massive problems in my in the world, mm-hmm. uh, financial problems, social problems, and you know civil unrest, etc. All of that's going to happen um, in the coming years, sadly. So, Egon. As you said earlier, you're not necessarily just a gold bug. Does this lead you to look at other assets besides gold, like perhaps Bitcoin, as a store of value through this tumultuous time? Well, uh, let me explain that I'm not into Bitcoin, and we are not in our company. To me, Bitcoin, I mean, was a tremendous investment for people who bought it for nothing. 
uh, just well, 15 years ago or so. Um, and and if they cashed out, you know, good on them. Uh, to me, Bitcoin has never been wealth preservation. Um, you know, it, it's it's a, it's another form of well, it's a it's a digital money, obviously, um, and and dependent on on electricity and and uh, and governments not banning it. If governments really issue major amounts of CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. I don't think they want Bitcoin to compete with that. And I think at some point they might easily ban Bitcoin. Um, I, uh, at, uh, so therefore, I'm, you know, I've said many times, Bitcoin might go to a million dollars or it might go to zero. That's the binary risk that I see. For me, that is not a good investment. Um, and, and therefore, I say out of Bitcoin. I'm not saying that it can't go to a million but I'm all, but at the same time, I'm saying you could lose all your money at some point. I think Bitcoin short term now, everybody is going into BlackRock, et cetera. That in itself is a bad sign in my view, not a good sign when BlackRock goes in. Uh, uh, you know, there's something wrong here. But but uh, so um, it, they could, uh, you know, it could go up short term. It's not unlikely at all. But at some point, I think something will happen which will make it so risky that people regret that they, they held it. Uh, that's my view. So I, I might be wrong. I don't care. I stick to gold. I understand gold uh, because the history, you know, you look at Bitcoin and the volatility going up from nothing and going up to 65,000 or whatever, then going down to 15,000 and up, and up to 30, 40, 50 again. Um, you know, they can, Bitcoin can, of course, never be an alternative to money because of its volatility. Uh, gold is much more stable than that. Um, so, so therefore, it is an investment. It could be a fantastic speculative investment. Um, we are more interested in wealth preservation. And, and, and from where I sit, I don't see this as a wealth preservation investment. So therefore, we're staying out of it. So I know if, for people who want to speculate, yeah, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure they could make money if they're good at it and good at taking profit. Um, but it's not for us. So that that's, I don't, as I said, and I think the risk is very high that governments at some point will say, no. We will control the money, not not the investors. And and still today, you know, it's not you can't really spend Bitcoin in 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 a normal way as you spend money. So it's not, and and I don't see that happening either because then central bank will definitely say, you know, we're not going to have a competitive money system here with uh, with our currencies. So 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 that's my my view on Bitcoin. But in the meantime, I wish good luck to anybody who invests in it, and and you know it's possible to make money. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And how about owning a gold ETF? You know, this is much easier <laughs> than trying to store physical gold. But you brought up the idea of counterparty risk earlier, as well as just the actual ownership of something physical. So. How do you see the risk of holding a gold ETF as a proxy for the real thing? Oh, we've written a lot about that. Holding a gold ETF is holding a, a form of paper, a claim on maybe physical gold. And, and, and if we investigate that, the, some of these ETFs, like yield, et cetera, probably don't have the gold or is rehypothecated many times and used many times, et cetera. There is a very high risk of that. And it's in the system. It's in the banking system. It's in the financial system. It's a paper asset. Um, so, uh, and you don't have you don't have the physical gold. You just have a piece of paper. Um, so that is not the way we look at wealth preservation. That's again, that's a speculative investment. If you're lucky, you get your money back. If you're unlucky, there wasn't enough gold there to meet, to meet uh, uh, you, uh, the commitment to, uh, to you uh, of the gold or the money you put in. So uh, for us, that that's, uh, has nothing to do with wealth preservation. If you want to preserve wealth, you hold gold in physical form outside the banking system in a jurisdiction that is as safe as it can be. Nothing is safe, of course. It's all relative in the world. There's no safe place in the world, totally safe. But at least you should elim eliminate as many counterparty as possible and, and, and counterparty risk, and therefore, you don't you don't put your wealth preservation money in, in 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 the financial system. You don't put it in the bankrupt banking system. And you know you know there are the the the, the people who 
uh, who, who hold this gold is JP Morgan and uh, HSBC, uh, with GLD, for example. Um, and like all banks, they're highly leveraged. JP Morgan has got one of the biggest derivative positions in the world. Um, and so you, that's not the place to hold your wealth preservation asset in a paper form, period. Um, uh, so that, that, and you know, you can, you can tr buy and sell physical gold very easily at a you know relatively low cost. Sure, it, it, it might not be well if you hold actually a, a, an ETF like GLD. You know that all in charge is about forty ba basis points for for bigger investors. You know, um, for bigger investors, we, we know uh, cost doing it outside the banking system is not higher uh, than that. So why why then would you go to a paper gold uninsured? Also, of course. A bank's never insure it either. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so that that that, in our view, that's totally the wrong way of preserving wealth. ETFs is just another convenient form of of dealing in paper money. There's only people who are not who are not accountable uh, and uh, for, for for the what they invest. You know, these are typical funds uh, that buy these things because it's easy. They don't give a damn. They get their salary. Because they're investment managers, they get their salary whether it goes under or not. Uh, the ETF. So you know, they, they we we like people who have skin in the game and will actually understand that. You know, this is a risk that I wouldn't take, so therefore I shouldn't let my customers take it either. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the that's how we look at the investments. Mm -hmm. Well, Egon, I want to thank you for reminding us of all of these important lessons. I think what it comes down to is the easy. And expedient things aren't necessarily going to be the most valuable. And I think that that, you know, really comes across in your guys' research, your writing as well. And I, I think that's a good, good lesson to kind of take from this chat that we had. Is there anything that you'd like to leave our listeners with before we wrap up? Well, I think we covered all the financial things because, um, you know, it's going to be a very difficult world to na navigate in. So you know, we, we can only you know, take the measures uh, that are possible and, and then hope that we've been right in doing that. Uh, but, you know, I, I always emphasize that life is not just money. It's all about, you know, family, friends, real values uh, and, you know, the best things in life. And I, I've said that many times. Are things like as a family, friends, nature, music, uh, books, etc. That are, most of it is free, and and you know I think all of those incredibly valuable assets are going to become much more important now when we start focusing on other things than just money. Um, and I think uh, and that will give a lot of pleasure to people if they actually, you know, focus on other things than than uh, so as long as uh, than just trying to make money or 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 invest money of course that presupposes that people have enough money for food and and for a roof over their head and, and for some people in coming years that will be very difficult so that comes to helping others i think it's, it's you know the, the years that are coming now you know and whenever whenever we can we should help our others uh, because there will be a lot of people who need help. Of course, you you can only help the ones that are near you. Um, uh, but I think that that will be uh, I can see that being necessary in coming years. Mm -hmm. So there are there's, there's, those are very important things to think about also, uh, except for money and gold and all we talked about here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent take on for those that want more of your writing and your thoughts at Gold Switzerland on Twitter and goldswitzerland.com or vongreers.gold as well, right? Yes, vongreers.gold, or even make it simple, vg.gold if you want a shortcut to it, uh, vg.gold. So, so uh, yes, uh, a lot of art, interesting articles there. Um, and we have a you know, very sophisticated system of helping people, uh, one of them being for bigger investors. You know, We have the biggest, biggest private gold vault in the world uh, in the Swiss Alps with partners, but the... Uh, and um, that's a totally unique facility. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, people, please go to our website. You'll see, you can read all about it there. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much for your time today, Egon. Tom, I appreciate it. Uh, really good to talk to you. Uh, and I think we've had a very important discussion. So thank, thanks for facilitating that. Of course. 
This podcast is for general informational purposes only. Nothing on this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Guests on this show are not compensated for their appearance. Listeners are urged to educate themselves and make their own decisions. Do not base any investment decisions on the information contained. To view our full disclaimer, please visit our website.